Red cameras capture extremely high resolution raw data files known as red code or .r3d files. This raw file is equivalent to your film negative in many ways and therefore is referred to in the industry as a digital negative or DNG and we're going to look in greater detail at what comprises these files. Understanding red code raw files and how to work with them in your nonlinear editor or NLE is imperative to a successful delivery of your red project and that's exactly what we're going to cover in this webinar. I'm here on red.com to point out that one thing about working with red is that right out of the gate red's motto was expect things to change and red users have embraced this philosophy and we evolved together. But because of this, there are literally new advancements that are constantly being made. So regularly checking the red.com support page, which I'm going to come over here and click on, and coming to the support page, we immediately see there's all these builds, there's plugins, um, and this is so important, in fact, to be checking this on a regular basis as part of our Red 2 NLE workflow, because in order to fully support native Red playback in our NLE, we must download and install the appropriate plugin. Now, since we're going to be looking first at working with Final Cut, we'll scroll down here, and you will notice about halfway down the page, I've got these Red Final Cut Studio 3 installers and Studio 2, for those of you that haven't upgraded your Final Cut yet, and you just want to download and install these plugins uh, ahead of time before going in so that we can support the Red code. Uh, natively. Let's take a quick look at the file structure from a RED camera shoot to better understand the data that we're going to be ingesting into our NLA. Now, RED cameras uh, record a master RED code RAW file, metadata, and four QuickTime reference movies, um, and will also most likely have corresponding audio files from the sound department. So, a typical RED directory looks something like this. Um, we will notice, you know, I want to point out that, you know, the, the Onset Data Manager did do some organization. They created this audio files folder, which if we scroll down, we'll notice how is organized by date. Um, then we've got the real directories that they put together. That's really where we want to dive into. So let's go into Real 31, for instance. And this now is exactly how the... Um, what we're going to be seeing straight off of the, the camera or straight off the drive that was delivered to us from set. So let's take a, a look a little bit deeper into the file hierarchy. What we see here is a bunch of files. Really quickly, um, this top file, this log file, and even these bottom two, these are uh, camera manufacturer files. For editorial, we can really kind of ignore them. Uh, the log file has to do with the camera itself, and should there have been a problem with the camera, we would send that file back to RED for evaluation and the profiles or color profiles that we don't deal with in our side. So what we want to look at is this is the, uh, the top of our file folder directly off the camera. Now this is set up to be the default bin for uh, ingesting into. Uh, at this point I'm going to go up under the file uh, menu bar here and I'm going to go to log and transfer. Many of you are used to log and capture when you're coming off a deck, um, and many of you are even uh, used to importing files. But in our case, we really want to go into log and transfer. If we went to import, it would bring it in, but it would automatically start to uh, transcode the QuickTimes into whatever default format. And since we want control over either using the native red or transcoding to our flavor of choice, uh, we're going to go into this log and transfer mode, which again, I got to from file and then log and transfer. Uh, once in the log and transfer, I want to point out you've got the real 31, which has come up because we set that logging bin in our browser window. I'm going to come up here into the upper left corner where uh, we have something that's called add volume. This is where I'm going to select the reels that I want to bring in. So if I click on add volume, there's our red camera source files. I'm going to click on the folder real 31. Um, but since today we're working just with red, I'm going to go into the red, and you notice right now it's set for native. But if I want to change this, because as I mentioned, there are a lot of uh, reasons why we might pick a particular flavor over another, as we talked about in the transcoding and codec section. But the two most common, if I uh, go ahead and just click, and I'm going to have to right click, you'll see all the options. I have native, which is working directly off that red raw file. Um, then the proxies actually allow us to access those QuickTime files, but we talked a bit about why we probably don't want to do that. LT is a light format, should you be really short on space. The most standard formats, however, are Apple Pro's 422, which is standard. If we were on a red rocket card, this would be done by now, and we'd see all of them in our file. Um, so 
with that said, uh, let's go ahead now and jump out of Final Cut. Let's take a look at this uh, um, uh, workflow into Avid and into Adobe Premiere as well.